Hello, welcome. This is the True Blue Quilts weekly quilt chat. I'm so glad you can join me and just sit and listen and um, put your name and where you're sewing in the comments. And um, we're just here to have a casual party. I am getting all set to so a jelly roll race i this is a diy set of two and a half inch strips uh, the fabric company moda uh, created jelly rolls to market their pre-cuts um, about what 15 20 years ago now and it has just become a fun event um, last saturday was national so a jelly roll day and I recently shared some ideas about different patterns and I was planning to sew on Saturday, but life took over. I got busy with other things. So I have this jelly roll, uh, DIY jelly roll, where I just grabbed strips from my stash. I have a bucket where I save two and a half inch strips and I just dug through that and found uh, 40 inch with the fabric uh, strips, you know, that still had their selvage. And I just made kind of an eclectic rainbow of fabrics. So I'm planning that this will be a, perhaps a backing for a child's charity quilt, something that, you, because I think this is going to be pretty wild um, with all sorts of different prints mixed in together. So if you have a sewing project going on, I'd love to hear about it. And um, before we get started on any big project like this, I like to have my big shears uh, next to me because the concept of jelly rolls, you sew long strips and then you cut on the fold to keep sewing and building that fabric. Um, I also need to get my thread organized. I have some pre-wound bobbins. So that's always important when you are sitting down to sew for a while. You want to make sure you have your bobbins. But I have been working on a bag project. And you can see I was doing zippers yesterday with uh, this turquoise material. So I have turquoise thread that I need to switch out before I sew my jelly roll. So I just pop the bobbin out and take out my nice pretty cone of Aurifil thread and set that aside for when I get back to my bag project and grab my neutral spool. This actually is number Two, one, two, three. It's a nice uh, neutral cream. Almost, it has a little bit brighter yellow tone. I've also got 2130 that's a little uh, to the tan side. This one's more yellow. This one's more tan. Uh, interchangeable, any kind of neutral thread is what I use for piecing. It might be light blue. It might be gray. Um, it might be in one of these, you know, tan or yellow spectrums. So get my machine all threaded. And then we will sew a jelly roll race. I like to have these projects on hand for sewing days. When you are sewing with friends, it's nice to have a kind of mindless project where you can chat easily and um, then you can you have a ready-made charity quilt so if a need crops up if you are a regular donator to uh, charity efforts such as quilts of valor project linus are some of the national ones i'm sure there are local ones um, we have Arizona Blankets for Kids that collects small quilts for children. So that's a good outlet for charity projects. Uh, some quilters sew for their local hospitals for the NICU, um, kind of those small layette items. Um, 
So lots of different, excuse me, I wanted to pick up a different spool of thread that I dropped here. I just kind of keep my workspace over there. So we are ready for our jelly roll. I made this nice bundle and I've got one end. And so I have to find the other end. Excuse me while I uh, check my phone because it was beeping. And of course, someone wants to buy my house. So I don't get a lot of the extended warranty messages, but people for some reason think that a cold uh, instant message will entice someone to buy to sell their house. So crazy, crazy times we live in. Anyway, so I'm going to let this drop so that I can find the other end and we will start our first long seam. Um, as I said, you usually have about 40 strips with the fabric in a jelly roll package. And this looks a little bit larger than a traditional um, prepackaged from a sewing manufacturer. So I may end up with a little bit larger quilt, but we'll see. So here we go, finding the end and you can see all these crazy strips and that didn't, just a few feet there didn't unwind very well. So let's pop out the end there. I've got lots of greens. I tried to just mix up a few colors, reds, purples, greens. So we're unwinding here to find the end of this red strip. And if I stand up for a second and kind of shake out my bundle, I it will end up at the end uh, really twisted but I can just snip off that last bit of messy area as long as I've got my right sides together here. And on some of these pre, um, I went through last year and did a rainbow jelly roll and I sewed all my strips with vertical uh, seams. And then last week when I was preparing the rest of the strips to make a full jelly roll, I started doing diagonal joins, so we'll see how that looks. So uh, let me just wrangle this stuff all back here and keep it in my lap, kind of contained. And we're going to sew the first long strip. So let's uh, take some notes on the timing. It is just now 8 a.m. Pacific time. So we are starting our jelly roll race and we'll see how how many minutes of continuous sewing i'll try and be quiet and not um, stop the machine how many minutes of continuous sewing this first seam takes so on your mark here we go and sewing 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 this is the kind of boring part um, if your machine has adjustable speeds you may want to Speed up the stitching speed. I've got the pedal to the metal. And that machine just hums right along. So let me know in the comments what your favorite pattern is to use jelly rolls. Do you cut them up for other, uh, for smaller shapes? Do you use the long strips to make uh, strata or stripes? I'm so curious about everybody else's favorite patterns. And I've got part of my problem. Sewing with strips that have been packed away for a while, there's, I didn't take time to iron. Ironing is the bane of my existence. So in most of my tutorials, I just finger press. Cheater, cheater.
I also want to say happy first day of fall. We're finally getting some cool mornings here in Arizona. The desert heat is tapering off. It's kind of a slow process here, but we're almost to our beautiful, the beautiful half of the year. We have half of the year where it's gorgeous weather in the winter and spring and half the year when we live on the surface of the sun and it's deathly hot. Sewing these big long seams can be quite boring. I apologize. Thank you for sticking with me. And I have to figure out the computer because I'm sure people are leaving comments and I can't see any of them on the way my uh, screen is set up. So I apologize if you are commenting and wondering why I don't reply back. But I do go back and look at all the comments after, after the live broadcast and I will reply. So I'm not ignoring you on purpose. So we've got our big tangle of jelly roll strips. And we're just sewing them together for the jelly roll race. And I didn't sew on Saturday for the jelly roll project. And I thought about just putting this bundle of fabric away for another time, but um, I, I got so much stash, I need to use it up and get it out the door. So. Um, like I said, I want to, I think this will make a fun backing for a charity quilt. So that is my goal is to get this all sewn together. And I've been working with some other quilters in my area. We have a monthly sew day and we uh, made some scrappy quilt blocks last month. So I've got things ready to put together. I just need to do it. So we're at the five minute mark and I don't even know that I'm halfway through the strip set. So the jelly roll race typically takes uh, 45 minutes or so if you've got the strips all pre-prepared and just don't talk as much as I do. <laughs> um, so it usually takes me about an hour to get the whole top together once I've got the strip sewn. Um, no, one long strip is what I mean when I say get the strip sewn because I'm sewing the strips now. All part of the process. So we've moved on into our green section. I just, like I said, I took a collection of strips from my bin. I tend to organize by size, or at least I did for a while. Um, I would, I was working on a project that needed one inch finished squares. So I have a bucket that's one and a half inch strips of fabric. And then I had my two and a half inch bin. And I think I did a three inch uh, bin for a while. I was following Bonnie Hunter's advice for organizing your stash. See what I mean by eclectic? I have some more tone on tone fabric and then I've got these fun stars on a green background. So very kid friendly.
And then up next after, oops, that, I rolled it up so nicely and it just is getting all tangled as I draw from both ends. So we'll let that dangle and untwist. So even though I, I live in a very warm region of the country, I still like to have my hot coffee in the morning, a, you know, steaming mug of the elixir of life, as some people say. Um, and it's kind of funny, I never drank coffee um, you know, my parents always drank it black, and then I finally discovered creamer and <laughs> said, oh, this is a pretty good start to the day. And, you know, I was part of the uh, generation that had uh, soda every day. You know, people would, friends of mine would come to high school with uh, Mountain Dew or Dr. Pepper, and that was their breakfast. So definitely not a healthy habit. Um, but yeah, so in my late 20s, early 30s, I switched from soda to coffee and um, neither are probably that great for you, but at least coffee doesn't have all the preservatives and artificial colors and things that we get in our soda. So that has become an occasional treat as I get my caffeine fix. So I've, I was sewing with some Paddington Bear fabric there in my green section. And then these fun polka dots. Pause for a minute to untwist all our fabrics. Um, so I did not measure my full length of jelly roll. Like I said, this is a DIY jelly roll. I just grabbed two and a half inch strips from my stash and we're sewing, sewing, sewing. It's been about 10 minutes on this strip so far. Yeah, I've got a ways to go. Machine just humming along in the background as I talk over it. Hopefully the sound is coming through the computer okay. I, do, I love uh, two and a half inch strips. So as you truebluequilts.com and look through the digital patterns that I have, you will see many, many of them are strip friendly. So if you're looking for a new pattern, uh, hop on over. Woo, that one got really tangled up. Probably could have. Come on, untwist. Best laid plans. You think that rolling the fabric would have been a good, good option and it just got go, going from bad to worse there as we try to find a place to untwist and unravel.
This is when you wish you had a fast forward button for the universe and could just keep this going at 10 times the speed. And I tend to sew in a quiet room. I know there's a lot of people that um, will listen to podcasts or audiobooks. Good morning, Heidi. The comments are showing up. Yay. And I do have an Audible subscription. I, I went ahead and did that uh, a few months ago because I was driving for vacation. And so I knew I would want that to listen to. Um, or on base, I could be listening to an audio book. But I don't usually turn it on here in the sewing room. So you, if you have any suggestions for audiobooks or podcasts that I should check out, I'd love to hear your recommendations. And the way I started out this quilt, it just so happens that all my seams are kind of hitting each other at the same place. Um, and I'm just now remembering that in the the official instructions at one point for jelly roll race they recommend chopping off you know eight to ten inches off that first strip so that you don't have this problem obviously i did not follow those instructions but i am a very much of a make it make do kind of quilter no mistakes, just design options. So um, Heidi is sewing in California. What you working on today, Heidi? Uh, I, I have a long list. I told you about my bag project. I've been sharing those updates on Instagram. So if you want to see that progress for my September bag challenge. I have to get that done here. We're September 21st, happy fall. But I need to get that project out the door. I usually have a piecing project and a long arm project and a huge pile of UFOs. So there's, I never lack for choices in what I could be working on. And then I get a wild hair like this to sew a jelly roll. So we will do that. And we're at the 15 minute mark and I've still got a ways to go. So like I said, the, obviously the first long seam takes the longest. And I had a question in a previous video about how big my jelly roll quilt ended up and I did not measure that. So that's the goal for today is to finish this and measure so we know how big our jelly rolls are. I was trying to do the math mentally and dividing the strips all in half and the number of, of folds and the width of your two and a half inch strips. I was guessing that it turns out to about 32 by 50. Um, so uh, surprisingly small when you think about it, but you can add some borders and uh, and bring that up to a twin size. Borders are fabulous uh, way to change the size of your quilt. If you can't add more blocks, you can. Just add borders. And you don't have to add borders to all four sides. If you need to increase the length and not the width, 
then just put a row of like I love a checkerboard. You can see on my banner here a checkerboard row across the top and the bottom would be fine um, in some complementary colors. And here we go with the twist again. I this is fun. I love this. Those chocolates <laughs> isn't that fun. I use that as backing on a quilt. And I'm just getting my amazing twisted roll of fabric here smoothed out so that I can. I was hoping this would be a little bit faster process, but sometimes I make life more difficult for myself than it really needs to be. That pre-planning, a little bit of pre-planning goes a long way. And with that, with that, keep getting things. Untwist, baby. I'm just pushing the twist on down the on down the fabric. And funny, it's kinking up like the garden host <laughs> does. Okay, so we've got a ways to go that we can keep sewing here. It's been almost 20 minutes with breaks for chatter. Um, I so appreciate my true blue crew sewing up showing up to sew with me and listen listening to me ramble i'm having so much fun seeing the different fall quilt shows cropping up. We were so starved for in-person events during the pandemic. All the quilters did a great job of showing up online, but it's really fun to be in person again. Um, Garden of Quilts in Utah somewhere. I'll have to do some research because that's pretty close. I should make an effort to get there next year. And of course, the big quilt festival in Houston in, at the end of October. That's a big one. Um, Pacific International Quilt Festival. I think there's one up in the Washington, Oregon area in the fall. There we go. Our seams are going to hit real close together again but we're almost to the end of our first row. And I love batik fabrics. So you can see this section has various shades of red and brown batiks. And yes, I mix them right next to regular cotton quilting fabric. Batiks are cotton fabric as well. They just have a different dye process for making that beautiful print. Um, but Go ahead and mix them in your projects. You don't have to be 100% um, one thing or another. Um, 
there are quilters that sew with a variety of fabrics. Um, some people even incorporate knits, um, linen, uh, obviously silk and velvet have been used in quilts forever. Um, I don't go to that extreme. Uh, batiks are about as uh, out of the box as I get. And I'm down here at the end and my fabric has just twisted up an incredible amount. So I will have to spend some time untwisting, but we'll do that when we get there. So I like to say that one of my defining features is that I'm very eclectic. So I think that's why I like scrappy quilts is because I just, I have so many different um, interests that it's hard to stick to one thing. Um, same thing with a Christmas tree. You see all the, you know, the Martha Stewart designer uh, homes decorated and they all have like one color scheme of a burgundy and silver Christmas tree. I'm everything. I have ornaments that have been collected for 50 years, you know, my entire life as my parents and grandparents gave me different Christmas ornaments or I collected them on my travels. And it's just, you know, everything in the kitchen sink. So um, my, my quilts tend to be the same way. Uh, all sorts of different prints and colors and just throw them all together, the more the merrier. Woo, we are tightly wound here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to estimate where the bottom half of that tube is and go ahead and separate my one long strip so that oh, we can relax and untwist those fabrics and I can get this strip sewn together because it's been almost half an hour. I started a little bit early. I do have a nine o'clock appointment. I'm hoping that appointment Zoom call, <laughs> not the, the 21st century version um, of appointments is all, you know, when's my next Zoom call scheduled? So I do have to hop off by then. So this will be a little bit longer live stream than usual. I Most weeks I try to keep our chats to about 15 minutes, but I do want to get as much done on this jelly roll quilt as I can. So we are just going to town, sewing our strips together. This is the first strip seam. When you take your first long set of jelly roll strips in one long piece and you just sew it together on the long end. The preparation step of sewing all the individual strips together I did last week. So that is not part of my timer countdown for how long it takes. I just consider that prep work and the clock starts when you sew this first long seam. And since I started with some color sets that had already been sewn, I didn't measure those. So I may have more than the equivalent of one jelly roll set. Um, and if you Google jelly roll quilt dimensions, you probably can find a chart somewhere that tells you, you know, if, if you start with X number of strips, how big a quilt can you make? That kind of thing. And I have seen such great patterns where you chop part of the strip set and then add a uh, alternate color. Um, so you can use jelly rolls to make other stripey quilt patterns besides just the jelly roll race. I was feeling kind of lazy. Wanted a quick finish. So I decided to sit down and sew these random fabrics together. I say random. I did try to keep it 
a somewhat cohesive set of colors. Red, green, and purple. There's a little bit of blue thrown in and some brown. And of course, the different colors on the prints. I've got several polka dot prints. Um, I showed you the chocolates. Uh, I've got some Paddington Bear. And we are almost at the end here of our first seam that took right around 30 minutes. Of course, my pause for Twisted Fabric and Chat. Okay, so set one has its two strips. I'm going to hang on to one end and find my other end. We are two strips wide by about 800. And like I said, that you get that twist going because there's no way I'm going to lay this out and this big long thing and, and try to sort it and get it flat all at once. So I just take the, the ends, match them up. That's where I sliced that strip in half and we're ready for set seam number two. This is one of those exponential math exercises. So we went from two strips doubled to four strips. So our width, our single strip was two inches finished. And then we have our first strip, our first seam creates a four inch wide piece and now I'm going to have an eight inch wide piece for step two. And it gets a little more difficult because you have to kind of unfold those that strip sets as you go. But I just keep one finger in between the two layers of fabric as I'm feeding it through trying to watch my seams as they, to make sure they lay flat as they go under the presser foot. So I said I have a mix of horizontal seams. You can see that I changed red fabrics there with a horizontal seam, but on my browns, I used a diagonal seam. So um, kids charity quilt, I'm thinking, uh, my that is an, an acceptable design element. There should be, I, I just, I'm not going to get too stressed out about that. When I'm in class with other quilters and they're asking me if they should rip out something, it's all personal preference. And if you can live with uh, in, how much imperfection you want to live with, if you want your quilts to be perfect and all your points to match, then rip it out and start over if they don't line up. Um, I'm a little more tolerant of mistakes, so um, I'm not going to purposefully put mistakes into my work, but uh, I do give myself a lot of leeway there in point matching sometimes. Um, and there certainly are tricks to help you improve your accuracy, and I try to follow those as much as possible. Uh, accurate cutting, accurate stitching with your quarter-inch foot, uh, keeping everything lined up as you sew. all gives you good results. Okay. 
So I'm just, as I go, I'm just unfolding the previous strip set so that I can line it up as it goes under the presser foot. I've got my other finger there in between the layers to keep things lined up and help me get those seams flat. Some people use a stiletto to guide there, and I do have my purple thing, to uh, guide those fabrics and hold those seams down. I just, I have, I'm not that coordinated to work with a stiletto very often. So I'm just very careful to keep my fingers out of the way as I uh, sew my seams together. Some of those diagonal seams didn't uh, lay flat under the needle the first pass, so I'm letting them just fold back on themselves whatever direction they went through initially. We're going to keep that up to keep our quilt as flat as possible. And as always, you can help me out by liking and sharing the videos if you find anything useful about this channel and this video. I am so thrilled that you're here spending time with me. The... The goal here is to enjoy, experiment, and excel as we quilt. So enjoyment. I find so much joy in the colorful fabrics and the creative ways that we can put these basic shapes together. The friendships that we build up as we quilt together, it's just that's the best part of the quilt world. Uh, experiment. This whole jelly roll race is an experiment. I just grabbed some fabrics and we're playing. Um, keeping that playful spirit is really important as you do any kind of creative work. Um, and I did see a short little video i don't know if it was a commercial you know when you watch uh things videos online you can never tell if they're actual just commercials like we used to think when we watch tv all the time or if they're uh you know just whatever i mean i suppose everything's advertising these days uh such a materialistic world i guess but um the whole point of the video was that we are all creative, whether you are a computer programmer or a classroom teacher or an artist or an author or an accountant, you're, you're doing creative work. Human beings are creative and I truly, truly believe that. So um, we have a little bit more tangible form of creativity but, and that's been a discussion at my house for a long time because my husband is, uh, he's very mechanically minded. He's always been kind of that handyman fix it person. And he's in IT, you know, fixing computers. And he says he's not creative, but it takes a, a fair amount of creativity to see those solutions um, and to be able to, to build and fix things. So uh, keep that positive mindset. You're doing good things. Um, so that goes along with the experimentation idea of True Blue Quilts. 
um, and designing quilt patterns. What would happen if I put these shapes together? How can I turn a half square triangle to make a different design? Um, a lot of experimentation and playfulness in the, the work of quilters. Let's see how I want to fold that seam so it's flat. And then the idea of excelling as we quilt. That that might be a little bit scary. Sometimes I I feel like a imposter when I say that we're going to excel as we quilt because I certainly am not perfect. And uh, as I was saying earlier, I I can tolerate a lot of imperfection. So. It, sometimes it feels wrong to say that we're we're going to excel as we quilt, but it's important to learn some of those basic rules. I'm not the quilt police. Don't get me wrong. I don't. Um, I'm not an enforcer by any means, but just some understanding of the basic mechanics of what we're doing as I'm fighting with my presser foot and. Uh, sewing with fabric that has been sitting in your stash for a while, it may have some pretty uh, jaggedy edges, some, some uh, fraying there, and those frayed edges get caught up around my presser foot, so I have to stop and detangle for a minute. But we're, we've got that problem solved. And we're continuing here. It's been about 10 minutes on scene two. Thanks for hanging out with me. Nice to have company for this monotonous jelly roll thing. Um, I, I just think it would be fun to have a whole room full of people and, and get that race aspect going where you're competing with others to cheer on those finishes. So I'm just lining up that edge and long straight seams. So this would be good practice for a beginner quilter to maintain that quarter inch seam, get really good at watching your presser foot or because all Every sewing machine that I've seen has some kind of guidance on the bed of the machine for that quarter inch, whether it's a particular line on or groove on your presser foot. Some quarter inch feet have that, you know, that sidebar guidance. Um, I switched presser feet and I don't have that three-dimensional guide, but I do have a, a groove. I do know where I need to watch to make sure my fabric is lined up at a quarter of an inch from the needle. So good practice there for quarter inch seams. It would be interesting. Um, I'm a, a math tutor, so all the numbers of the jelly roll are running through my head. Um, it would be interesting to calculate the mileage, how many miles of seams that you sew in one quilt. Um, it would be, <laughs> even for a really simple quilt, it would be pretty amazing. Those small steps add up. You know, people are always amazed when you say, this quilt has 2,000 pieces. Well, yeah, but they go together pretty quickly, so. And it's the most fun way i found to spend my time, so. I'm just sewing long straight seams here for a jelly roll quilt and 
chattering about whatever kind of crosses my mind. So, uh, I don't know what kind of deep psychoanalysis you could do <laughs> as to all my random topics that cross my mind. Um, but I do appreciate you spending time with me here on our weekly quilt chat. And if you have any questions, type them in the chat or send me an email and we will, um, we will discuss those. I'll have a Q&A session here. Uh, I'll make a note for next week because I, I have gotten some questions that are good discussion topics. So speaking of discussion topics, those kind of icebreaker questions that we all use to fill the, fill the dead air. Uh, what was your last fabric purchase? I did. I I I went shopping last week, but I didn't buy any fabric. I needed some thread for a customer quilt that I'm doing on the long arm, and just some other notions at the quilt shop. So I've finally got down to the end and you can see a little bit of a twist there. I'm just going to come out to about halfway, put a little bit of tension on those strips and just cut them in half. So you will have some, or I end up with ragged edges, um, but that is all going to be trimmed off at the end when you get your full jelly roll race quilt done. So that was about 15 minutes. So the first strip seam what took me 30 minutes to sew and the second one took 15. So I cut down the chatter and kept going. Obviously my fabric wasn't tw twisted as badly this second time around. And half the length because we're folding our strips in half every time takes about half the time. So we would expect about seven or eight minutes for this third row. So now I have four, I can't find the end. I have to remember my other end had that purple and red. So I have a width of four that's going to become a width of eight and we'll untwist that to get started there. And you could even up your ends every step of the way I am in the interest of time. I am not doing that. I'm just going to eyeball that for my starting point and give it a little shake to open things up as we start our third seam. So we went from about 1600 to 800. So this will be about 400 in inches. I'm guesstimating eight inches or no, eight and eight is 16, 16 inches wide. So like I said, that exponential growth, because our first I'll have to I'll have to do the math on that again, because we went from four to eight. Yeah, I guess so.
numbers can make your head spin. So I'm evening out both edges just so that things lay flatter. And as you do long bouts of sewing, you need to remember to take care of your body. So get up and stretch. I can feel my shoulders are getting a little tired. So I will definitely be doing some stretches after this to loosen things up. And let me know in the chat. I don't think I'm going to finish this because I have another call at nine o'clock. So I'm going to have to jump off here in a few minutes at the end of this scene. If I should do a live stream part two or just a reveal of the project at the end. If anyone is around, I could come back this afternoon or this evening and finish up. I think I will plan on doing that. I will be back live um, let's say at, um, we'll say 7 p.m. Eastern or 7 p.m. Pacific. So uh, I will set this project aside all day and we'll have an after dinner live se uh, session to finish up the jelly roll top because I couldn't quite get it finished in an hour. Too chatty with my friends here. Thank you again for joining me. Um, next Tuesday, uh, I promised a Q&A. So if you have any questions about quilting in general, about my projects in particular, I am happy to answer those questions. So we will plan on a quilting Q&A next week. I will get a I'll put a post up that you can uh, type your comments into and then we'll plan on that for our next Tuesday quilt chat. I do have my lightning round of questions that when I interview other quilters, I've done a few uh, a, a few videos like that where I interview other quilters. And so I'll use some of those lightning round questions as topics for our Q&A. But you, if you have anything on your mind, definitely leave me a comment so that I can include your questions in our quilt chat Q&A. And of course, with the comment feature, you can always leave me comments during our live broadcast. Um, 8 a.m. every Tuesday for quilt chat. I'm thinking about bringing back some of the games that we played last spring. Ooh, look, I made it without a twist. That's a big deal. So this was round three and it did take about 10 minutes. So we're right on track. So what kind of trivia games uh, should we play? That's another uh, question. I need audience input. If you like uh, word scrambles or just straight trivia question and answer, if you like a scavenger hunt type game, 
we can do that. I've also thought about hosting a fabric swap. So you'd have to let me know if that's something you'd be interested in too. Okay, so we had three rounds here in about an hour because I started a little early today. Three rounds of strips gives me two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 inches of material. Like I said, it's a very eclectic mix of fabrics. And I think, let's see here. As I fold it in half, as if I were sewing the next round, I'm trying to get a length here. When I was a kid, my mom taught me that, you know, your arm arm's length to your nose was about a yard. So there I have two yards. Four and a half. So I'm at about five yards times 36, 144. Why am I doing math in my head, in public, on video when I could just, so that seems short, 180, but maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, this is about um, 120, so 16 by 120 right now, and we'll get this sewn. I told you I would be back at 7 p.m. Pacific tonight for part two as we finish the jelly roll top. It will probably only be another 30 minutes of live broadcast here to sew a couple more seams on this and uh, see what we want to do with uh, borders and, and that kind of thing. Like I said, I was planning to make this a backing. Um, I actually have another jelly roll quilt that I could put on the back, but I've also got a couple other charity quilts for kids um, that I think this would be a fun backing. That way you have a two-sided quilt. So everybody have a great day. Have fun sewing, and I will see you back for the wrap-up of the Jelly Roll Race 2021 at 7 p.m. Pacific tonight, right back here. See you soon.